Hi, I'm Mark Fedora. Today's Wild West is in Wickenburg, Arizona, home of the Desert Caballeros Trail Ride. We'll take you on that exciting adventure and show you this truly Western town coming up next on today's Wild West. The Wild West, it's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. It's good to be home. Like conquering heroes, the Desert Caballeros Trail Ride returns to Wickenburg, Arizona. For the 69th year, some 135 men have spent five days horseback in the beautiful Sonoran Desert. Are you having fun? This final day on the DC ride was a celebration, a mission accomplished. But earlier, some mixed emotions as well. It's gonna be good to get back, but you kind of miss, uh, you miss the people more than anything else, actually. That last day's trail would take us through the Hacienda River Canyon. Another gorgeous day horseback in a beautiful park of the American West. Been wonderful, absolutely wonderful. It all began a week earlier back in Wickenburg. As riders from all over the country, around the world, and from all walks of life reconnected at a series of pre ride parties or met for the very first time. Very psyched up. Just the history of it, you know, the history of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's the longest and oldest all male trail ride. This is my second year. I wish I'd started 10 years ago. We see some sites that you just cannot believe. It's a real special thing, and as you go through the ride and you ride the beautiful Sonoran Desert, you end up meeting people from all over the country that over the years you become good friends with. Dr. Paul Cleaver has been part of the Desert Caballeros for 58 years. But the past president and former trail boss is no longer physically able to make the ride. The Desert Caballeros ride has been one of the biggest parts of my life. <laughs> with most riders from out of town, most rode rental horses, like the ones provided by Tim Show of Tucson's Pantano Stables. We met our mounts the day before the ride. Well, there's 48 guests riding, but we brought 58 for extras and wranglers. Okay. From novices to advanced riders, from people that's never rode to people that ride every day. It's the best uh, uh, string of horses for uh, rental that I believe uh, I've ever uh, experienced. Right. See you next time. Sunday evening, riders, wives, and friends gathered for one last splendid send-off party at Wickenburg's Rancho de los Caballeros Dude Ranch Resort. Lots of cool stuff to bid on at the silent auction and lots of fascinating people to meet, like local rancher and longtime DC ride supporter, Angel Morales. Yeah, my daddy come here in a covered wagon. Transplanted New Yorker Boots O'Donnell was here for his very first DC ride. I can't wait. Jim Nichols was back from California for his 25th. Out of all the rides I've been on, uh, this is my favorite. And one of the reasons it's my favorite is because it goes from point A to point B to point C. It's a real ride. The ladies were having a good time. Plus, we have our own party Monday night. <laughs> Many of these women would soon be on their own horseback adventure, the annual week-long Las Damas ride. I'm chair of that ride this year, so I'll be working on that this week and probably having some fun with some of the girls. <laughs> For the cowboys, the real fun would begin in the morning. I got a Rick Nauman. Yeah. His saddle over there. Monday morning, downtown Wickenburg. I'm going to put you on Bam Bam. After final introductions to our horses. So you, they'll probably be calling you Pebbles. Probably. Okay. Is that okay with you? It makes no difference to me. Okay. <laughs> Everybody was raring to go, with a few exceptions. I'm dreading it. <laughs> Why is that? My rear end's not going to like it. Yeah? It's rear physical. Why do you put yourself through it? I guess just to prove that I still can. The DC ride is a big deal in this small yet historic western town. And after the speeches, Who's brought strength? the national anthem, and the prayer, Father God, the riders set out in grand fashion, with flags in the lead, parading through the streets. And then we were off the pavement and into the desert, some rugged mountain trails, towering saguaro cactus, and relaxed conversation. So you summer up in the San Jacintos? That's why they call me El Nieto, the grandson. Michael Rosenberg's grandfather introduced him to the ride 11 years ago. Yeah, he just turned 87 this year, so he doesn't ride much anymore. 
Michael's an experienced horseman, but he's not here for the riding. There are a lot of great people on this ride, all types. The people that ride anytime we want, the, the only reason we come out is for the people. RJ Morris is a flight instructor, teaching people how to fly light jets. Flew in five James Bond movies. If your viewing audience could see the position you're in, they'd oh. be amazed. Attorney Jim Nichols is a founding member of the Cowboy Lawyers Association. You meet interesting people and you're... In God's country, look at these mountains, look at these skies. If you like cowboy and what's what's not to like? Scott Stevens works in IT security. I live in a strange high-tech world. I'm on airplanes every week. So for me, this is a this is a nice change of pace. It's completely different from the other 51 weeks of the year. <laughs> That's awesome. Keeping all these guys safe is job number one. Crew members with radios are spaced throughout the ride to call for medical help if it's ever needed. And we have a direct radio to the sheriff's office help to the helicopter if we need it. What did he do, lose his shoe? He did. A farrier was on board to handle any horseshoe problems. The guys care about their horses. And veterinarian Dr. Robin Waldron was here to keep the horses healthy. Most of the riders care a lot about the horses. They try to take good care of them. And if there's a problem, they let me know right away. And if it's a serious problem, the horse is pulled and he gets a trailer ride home. If the horse has got a minor problem, sometimes we can patch it and get back to the next uh, next stop and fix it more permanently that way. Well, we rode out of Wickenburg about 11 o'clock this morning. It's about uh, 2 o'clock now. We're getting our first water break. Good day on a good horse. Great trip. Along the trail, wranglers, easy to spot with their red hat bands, were ready to assist any rider at any time and take the reins when the day's trek was over. How'd you do, buddy? Did good. You didn't fall off? I didn't. See, you know, somehow. All right, that's good. Somehow. <laughs> so how's your day, Patrick? Awesome. Nice run, 1363. After two days on the trail, we stayed put on Wednesday for a day of R&R. &R. You could test your horsemanship in a friendly competition known as Jim Connor, while some of the other guys went trap shooting. Here goes my baby. Here he goes. Later, some exciting amateur horse racing. Fred Snyder got to be one of the jockeys. They uh, asked me if I would do it, and I've always wanted to do this. He was riding Robert Burnside's quarter horse, Lady. So, uh, confident to victory here? Uh, marginal. Marginal. We're going to have fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Buck Dollar Band came up from Phoenix to entertain Quite a concert around the campfire. While we relaxed, the Wranglers were hard at work, taking good care of all the horses, setting up the huge picket lines, saddling, brushing, watering, and feeding. We've got a heck of a crew. We got a good crew. We got the picket lines up fast. Yeah, we probably got one of the better crews we've had in, for a long time. I mean, they're all good crews, but these guys are kind of exceptional. Houston's catering kept all the cowboys fed in grand fashion. They eat well, they eat often, and they eat a lot. <laughs> Mickey Houston's menu included steak and shrimp, brownies, and ice cream. My grandpa, who's 93 years old, makes the gravy for me still. During the summer, Houston's mobile kitchens hit the road, feeding the crews the battle forest fires. He can feed three meals a day to 3,000 people a day. So taking care of the caballeros is almost like a paid vacation. They like us here and we like to be here. Then there's all the tents, tables, chairs, and porta potties to move from camp to camp, plus all the advance work to scout, ride, and clear the trails that goes on in the weeks and months before the ride. And it's a challenge. You know, we finish this week, you can go home and, and you realize you're, you're doing something not everybody can do. So there, there's a lot of work goes into this before the actual ride. What a ride it is. Closer look at the trail just ahead. It's 6.30 in the morning, and the DC Ride Advance Party heads out of camp. About half a dozen guys lead pack horses loaded down with cold drinks. <laughs> They'll set up a midday refreshment stand along the trail. None of our models agree. But leading pack horses can be a challenge. The packs, the weight of the packs, um, compressed the the pad a little bit so after you ride for a while the, the cinches loosen up oh yeah this is really loose and sometimes the packs need adjusting Good. 
This used to be a sheep camp in this area. There's lots of history on the trail and the old mining and wagon roads in the back country of the remote Arizona desert. Oh boy, this is a really wonderful rugged country. Great for horseback, great for hiking. During the week, the trail would take us over rocky mountain tops and down again through narrow canyons and the old ghost town mining camp of Gold Bar. Windows right there, full lead glass, World War I vintage glass. And always an easy sense of humor along the way. So where, where are we at this moment? What do you call this canyon? We're right here. Right. <laughs> no, no matter where you go, there no, you are. Yeah, no matter where you go, you're, there you are, see? Right. Yeah. Long days in the saddle come with no ringing phones, no emails, no pressure. Replaced by the soothing clip-clop of the horses, the beauty of the desert, and if you're lucky, a glimpse of its wildlife, like a rare desert tortoise. It's a chance to switch off from the outside world, relax, and connect. I mean, you can't, you can't ride a horse as many miles as we do together and not just relax and talk to each other. There's, there's an openness here that you don't find in other places. It's a fraternity in a way, but, in, but not. It's more, it's deeper than that, I think. And that's what brings these guys back year after year. This is actually my fifth year of riding and 30th year out here. What keeps you coming back? Uh, camaraderie mostly, just enjoy being around these guys. Yeah. It's a great ride. By week's end, you not only understand the motto of this group, but you feel it too, for the love of the ride. Yeah, it's been a great ride. Uh, I always like I think everybody's so. enjoyed it. And come every April, this Brotherhood of the Saddle will ride out of Wickenburg once again. If there's one thing you need on the Desert Caballeros trail ride, it's a good cowboy hat. And Wickenburg's Jimmy the Hat Man will be happy to outfit you with a custom hat like no other. It's incredibly exciting, quite fairy tale-ish. Christina Brady is buying her very first custom cowboy hat. It's jewelry, head jewelry. And what a hat it'll be. The shape of the hat I'm wearing, this color, and with this bead work, but the bead work will be this design. This beaded feather design will adorn the hat band, the hat brim, and the chin strap, better known out west as a stampede string. And the feather will also be placed inside this inlay. Wow, that'll be awesome. I know. <laughs> All custom made by this amazing man over there. That would be Jimmy Harrison, also known as Jimmy the Hat Man. <laughs> Anytime I see somebody's face light up that's, that's genuinely happy with what I've done, then that's, that's the best part for me. At Jimmy's Double H Hat Company in Wickenburg, Arizona, you'll see cowboy hats you've never imagined with inlays of turquoise, silver sculptures, even an elk tooth. Of course, that all started 20-some years ago when I found a flaw in the side of a, in a, crown of a hat, a tuft of hair that went all the way through that couldn't be sanded out. So I cut that out and inlaid a bone pin in there and that's kind of where it all started. They aren't the kind of hats John Wayne would wear, but if you want one just like the Dukes or Tom Selleck or any Western star, Jimmy can do that too. Do a lot of duplications. They can send me photographs, they can send me pictures, they can tell me a, of a hat they saw in a movie. This is a, a hat very similar to the one Tom Selleck wore in the movie, Quigley Down Under. This is a uh, duplicate of the hat that Val Kilmer wore in the movie, Tombstone. Actor Val Kilmer, who grew up in Wickenburg, commissioned Jimmy to make a line of hats just like the one he wore as Doc Holliday. And he will autograph it to them personally. Jimmy also made the hat actor Buck Taylor wore in Tombstone and recreated Buck's raggedy top hat from Cowboys and Aliens. He tried to get it out of wardrobe, but couldn't find it anymore. And so I duplicated that hat right down to the sweat stains, to the frayed edge in the, in the brim. I will actually sand this hat. It's quite a process. Jimmy is one of the relatively few custom hatters in the country who craft a hat from the raw body. And then I'll actually mist it with alcohol and light it on fire. And that will Singe the long hairs off. Top quality hats are 100% beaver. The hat ends up looking something like this before it's ready to be steamed and shaped in any style you can imagine for any kind of person. 
and all the ordering can be done over the phone or online. Like I say, I guarantee everything, so it's, it's not a problem. I do a lot of hats for people that, uh, that I never meet. After more than 20 years in the profession, Jimmy needs just a photograph and a head measurement to craft the hat you want. He'll, of course, give you all the details, and his work is 100% guaranteed. I guarantee everything, even right down to the shape. So if people want to come back in over and over and have me tweak their hats or, or work with them on it, I, I will do that because that's the only way I'm going to get them to buy another one. Spend time with Jimmy, and you quickly discover this is a guy who loves his work. Yeah, the fun part is uh, designing a hat in my head and then going shopping for what I want to put into it or, or on it and, 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 then, and then building the hat with a fictitious customer in mind and then building, building a show hat that hopefully somebody will come in and... Check out this hat featuring a hat band fashioned from a century old piece of barbed wire laid over an old wagon rain. The rain that we used for the hat band that we put the barbed wire over was too thick so we split it and then the back of it we split again and that's what we used for the lace around the around the edge of the brim. And while we all associate cowboy hats with cowboys, most of Jimmy's customers are actually from the East Coast. They certainly send a lot of hats to the state of New York. Oh you do? Yeah the whole East Coast actually is a very good is a very good hat customer of mine. And here I am, a happy customer. That's where Christina's from. She was so thrilled with her hat, her feet were barely touching the floor. I'm excited. It's gonna make you feel pretty good. It does. She, she was very happy. I think she came in here with no idea that she was gonna order a custom-made hat today. Well, the one thing I'm excited about is when it's not on my head, it's gonna be on my wall. And look at how gorgeous that is just hanging there. It's gonna have a special hook. Didn't we all dream about being a cowboy or a cowgirl? Thanks to Jimmy, Christina Brady's dreams came true. You'll feel right at home wearing a cowboy hat in downtown Wickenburg, Western Wickenburg that is, a town that truly deserves that nickname. Yeah, it's all traditional sheepskin lined inside, uh, good Herman Oak uh, leather, all hand carved. In his shop in downtown Wickenburg, Arizona, saddle maker Lee Bird is building a custom rifle scabbard. I did all the logo and stuff for their DC ride. The scabbard and a prized rifle would be raffled off during Wickenburg's 69th annual Desert Cavaleros ride, where we ran into Lee on the trail. Been wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Lee was riding the saddle he was building when we first met him in his shop the month before. I'll do the skirts next, uh, which will be all traditional sheepskin and leather. Um, I'll put all the D-rings and necessary parts in it and, and have it mounted underneath. Um, then I'll go ahead and I'll do the the back cannel, and then I'll go ahead and cut my seat and do my stirrups all by hand and how I want it. Lee builds two or three saddles a year, but most of his work is in repairs, like replacing the worn out sheepskin lining on the bottom of a saddle. This is an old one that I'll replace today. But this craftsman's display case shows the many other ways his talent is put to use. I make belts, I make wallets, I make purses, um, I make um, any kind of a computer tablet case. Working with leather is a family tradition. Lee's father taught him how to carve. He was taught by a saddle maker by the name of Speed Wilson. And uh, I still use some of my dad's original tools that was given to him by, the, by him. But making a living in his passion is not easy. There's not a lot of profit in it. It's, uh, it's a labor of love and I do love it very much. I enjoy the carving, I enjoy making things and I enjoy fixing things. The Western lifestyle is in Lee's blood. His grandparents owned the Oak Creek Tavern in Sedona, Arizona, where five Western artists met back in 1965 and founded the now famous Cowboy Artists of America. Lee's grandmother snapped the photograph of the men that historic day. Those founders included Joe Beeler, who created this painting in Lee's shop commemorating the meeting, and Charlie Dye, whose custom chaps, built by Lee's father, also adorned the saddle maker's wall. Char it's actually C.D., Charlie Dye. You have the cowboy heritage burned in your jeans. I do. I enjoy it very much. Um, I enjoy being around these types of people and, and learning from them. He's in the right town. Western Wickenburg, as it's known, is just that. Arriving travelers are greeted by a highway roundabout displaying the world's biggest pair of spurs. There are a number of other public Western sculptures in town, including this memorial to native son Everett Bowman, known as the Cowboy's Cowboy, 
and a world champion rodeo star back in the 1930s. Another notable monument marks the spot of an Apache stagecoach attack back in 1871 that left seven people dead. Julie Brooks' ancestors were living here then. Five generations, a uh, Macias family who ranched in the area since 1857. Wickenburg, named after Henry Wickenburg, whose gold strike founded the town, has long been proud of its western heritage and worked to keep it alive. Early businessmen and women felt that it was important to preserve our heritage. And with that came some really good planning. Downtown is thriving with all kinds of western themed shops. Its crown jewel is the Desert Caballeros Western Museum. And on Sunday, even church is cowboy. This town is so western, there's not just one custom saddle maker, but three. And we all still, even though we're all doing the same thing, we all work together when, when one can't uh, get the work done or can't do what they need to need to help out somebody, uh, they'll pass it on to the next person. The weather is so, is so nice. It hardly ever rains. No shortage of customers in the saddle business. In recent years, Wickenburg has become known as the team roping capital of the world, attracting cowboy snowbirds who come to escape the cold and ride and rope, like Wyoming rancher Kenny Knutsi. They started team roping here in the wintertime about 10, 12 years ago, and uh, uh, it just kind of grew, and uh, all of a sudden it's uh, there's hundreds of team ropers here in the wintertime. Hundreds. Uh, I don't know, I just love the atmosphere. But you don't have to be a team roper to experience Wickenburg from the back of a horse. This town was long known as the dude ranch capital of the world. And coming up on today's Wild West, we'll saddle up and take you riding at the Flying E Ranch. All right, whenever you're ready. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Team Penning at Wickenburg, Arizona's Flying E Ranch. It's a pretty simple game, with some old cowboy tunes providing the theme music. You ride from one end of the big arena to the other, cut out three cows from the herd, and drive them back to a small pen. The fastest group wins. Nothing to it, right? Well, not quite. Hey! Come on now! It's a chance to discover your inner city slicker. Especially for those who've never been here or never even been on a horse. Yeah, it's really fun. Kids never done it. The figures they like it. I never done it. I'm 46, so why not give it a try? It's, uh, yeah, best place on earth. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Except for Ireland. Barry and Claire O'Shea have been coming for years. It's his eighth visit, her ninth. Uh, it's peaceful. It's beautiful. Uh, the the people that work here and the food that they make, I think. And the simplicity of the whole thing. Uh, I don't know, I just love the atmosphere. Claire's dad, Paul Byrne, started the family tradition 15 years ago. There's something about it, it's just so, you just relax when you get here, and the atmosphere is so conducive to just forgetting everything and enjoying the desert and enjoying the simple food, and it's always great company. We generally have such a fantastic time Lots of humor, lots of laughter. It's all thanks to Vi and George Wellick. Back in April 1949, the California couple were flying their private plane to a ranch in Texas when Vi spotted what looked like a motel in the desert. After spending the night in Phoenix, they tossed a coin to decide whether to go on to Texas or check out that intriguing spot back in Wickenburg. They flipped the coin, it was tails. They came back, they fell in love with the ranch, and the rest was history. The Wellicks bought the Flying E in 1952 and ran the ranch for more than 50 years. Today, the Wellick Foundation operates the Flying E, a beautiful property with a vintage flavor where you can still see and feel the touch of George and Vi. And Vi, you know, she loved the West. She loved to ride horses. It's a little tiny uh, squirrel cactus. That's about as small as one you'll see. Right there. But perhaps the couple's most enduring legacy is the unspoiled land of the Flying E. This is just amazing country. George and Vi put together 20,000 acres of magnificent Sonoran desert trails for guests to ride. And at its heart, the Flying E is a riding ranch. Aaron Adamson has been head wrangler here for more than 25 years. Every day is a little different out here. Every trail is a little different. This is fascinating country, and no better way to see it than on a good horse. We need all kinds of horses, uh, more advanced rider types, uh, little kids, horses. The Flying E also has great horses for those of us who do ride and isn't afraid to let you step on the gas. 
stuff. I don't know if you ever heard of something called chia. So great to be out here. So much beauty. So much to see. Like this bizarre crested saguaro cactus. They say there's only a few hundred of them in the whole state of Arizona. So they're quite rare. Time on the trail is good for the soul. Especially for those who need to decompress from a frazzled life back in the big city. Desert kind of mellows a person out. We get folks in the middle of New York City and they're pretty wired. And after watching them after a couple of days, they kind of mellow out a little bit. Yeah, if I get much more mellow, I just roll off my horse. But these trails can also have their share of adventure. You got to hear him? Yeah, he's right there. When the rattlesnake loudly warned us to keep away. Right there he is. Okay. Yeah. The snake gave us plenty of warning and we were never in any danger. But it was pretty cool to see. It's a true western adventure when you see a rattlesnake, huh? Yes, it is. Just to be out here is an adventure. To see the giant saguaros, the magnificent views, learn about the natural world, and the history of this place. Easy to see why people like Deborah Park have been here 15 times. I do love it here. Yeah. So, uh, it's like my favorite place. Yeah? But what, why is it your favorite place? Um, good horses, good food, good people. We know a lot of folks here. It's nice to walk in the door and everybody knows your name. Back at the ranch, it's fun just to hang out at the corral with the horses. The guy that we lease our horses from, he's just got a great eye for horses. Hmm. You know, we get really, really good horses from, from him. Or spend time with Ferrier Cruz Ruiz as he changes the horseshoes. See how thin that is? Oh, wow. Where's, where's it right down, huh? Yeah. So that's like clipping their fingernails, what you're doing. Yep, that's right. Yeah, they get long and then they get trippy, you know, they, they stumble with the rocks or something. What happens if you don't shoe a horse? They'll go lame, more likely. What's your horse's name? Zeb. Zeb, yeah, he's a great horse. He loves kids. Lots of special moments, like a little guy's very first horseback horse. ride. I said, Always I said to him yesterday, do you want to come back next year? He said, I want to come back all the years. All the years. <laughs> Seems like everybody who comes here feels that way. I think we'll do it again, especially my oldest daughter. She definitely wants to do it again. <laughs> it's difficult not to like. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedour. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in Today's Wild West, or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com.